Usually I don't even take any takes on my TV show, so. It's no worries. Okay, we're on. All right. So, Jen Canodal, okay? Uh, We're talking to Jen, who's, and let me see here. I'm going to just turn the line on for a second. Mainly you're fine. I'm not. So the name of the blog is Jan Chicago Takes the Windy City, right? That's right. And they can find that by going, I would think, to chicagonow.com slash Jan Chicago Takes the Windy City, right? Yes, there, there you go. It's a long it's a long title. You could probably find it if you search Chicago Now and Jen Chicago. So, yeah. You just go Jen Chicago. You're like the only Jen in Chicago, right? I am. I think I'm the only Jennifer in the world, yes. I saw that you're the only Jennifer I know. So in my entire world of women, really, I just you know it's you would think it would be a little bit more common name. Oh, it's super common. I guess it's because your name's not Jennifer. Yeah, it's super common. I don't know, but I think we should probably get married because I think Jeff <laughs> and Jam. Don't you think that's got a yeah, nice ring to it? It does. It has a nice zip. I think so. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think marriage requires much more than you have two names that I, sort of put together. Yeah, I mean that's that seems like all anyone else is is doing before. <laughs> that's the only qualification some people are having. So okay, so you started this blog about how long ago? Uh, the summer of two thousand twelve. No, two thousand eight. So I guess about six years. Mm-hmm. Wow, that is a long time. Yeah. And. Just tell people, what does your blog do, uh, basically? This I know, but people, I mean, just turning this on, they haven't read it before. So just give them a sense of, you know, what do they find when they go to Jen, take, Jen Chicago takes the Windy City? You know, um, in, mostly it's been a mixture of events and um, I'm a video producer, so I like to make videos about places that I've gone. Um, I think without even really knowing it, I've kind of... Um, uh, created a little niche of um, doing videos myself. I mean, just really, you know, taking my iPhone and saying, hey, everybody, here I am. Because sometimes you're at a great spot. You don't have your camera guy with you. You don't have a, you know, 12-piece video production crew. But you don't know if you're ever going to go to that restaurant again. You want to capture it. And, um, you know, you get some authenticity. And, and, and events a lot. Um, I do a lot of events. I do some red carpet interviewing. But um, I like to promote cool. There's so many cool things to do in Chicago that I really like to promote that. Well, but are the videos on your blog? Is Are the links to the videos on your blog? Yeah, yeah. I have, I have a lot of the videos up there um, for sure. Yes, I, I try to include videos as, as often as I can. But, um, yeah, that, that editing sometimes... I, I have some in the in the hopper, or whatever. I'm not really sure what a hopper is, but well, it's a hopper is a, somebody who kind of hops around. You know? <laughs> well, you know, uh, yeah. Oh, is it okay? Oh, well, I don't know, but you know, but more, <laughs> well, I, that's that's at least one version of a hopper. Yes. You know, well, okay. Everybody knows a hopper is things that are sort of like a work in progress, right? Very, okay, so that's if you've got there good. In the, hop, the hopper, they're in there, and they're being worked on and out of the hop when they come out of the hopper they're like a finished video it's like an academy award it's like the great gatsby right oh that's that's the only stuff i make yeah exactly yeah <laughs> i've known you now for we've known each other for a pretty long time right oh yeah you say you do something well people can rely on that i think right i i, I hope so yeah pretty much the great gatsby of chicago now well I mean, you said it <laughs> so but seriously um Okay, so I looked at, I started looking at your blog, and I just looked at some of the things, and one of the first ones I saw was about Oprah putting on a show with women who married guys, and then they, I guess they put on a few pounds over the years, and it sounded like it was a show about wives who had this problem with their men having put on a few pounds, and they have to put them on a diet or something like that. Did I get that right? Um, was, it was something. Was your blog post about that sort of thing? Uh, yes, I mean it was. Um, that was one of the event posts that I did. So oh, um, the now that one. isn't that the most ahead. recent one on there? I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, but I was thinking, is there a video with that? blog post? No, um, the videos are normally things that I've experienced myself. So, um, you know, I think when people see that, um, I'm running around town, then they want me to, um, tell my audience, um, what type of events are upcoming. Um, if they're kind of cool and unique, even if I'm not necessarily involved in them, if they sound cool, then, um, I'll go ahead and post them. 
So, right. so that one, I, I am not married, nor do I, um, uh, have a, um, loved one that has put on too much weight, but I would imagine, uh, women aren't the only ones with that problem. No, but what I was wondering about, so if I read like the first five or six posts, so I was sort of getting ready for this interview, doing a little research, I thought they were kind of all like promo events. I didn't see anything that I saw had a video. So are you saying those most recent five or six posts would be different from what you described? You go to a restaurant, you yeah. want to make a video, you put, so that's kind of a different thing. If people go to your blog, they're not going to find that kind of thing in the first five or six posts, right? Um, correct. They're not, I, I also have my own website. So it, it, there's, um, you know, I didn't want to post the exact same things on Chicago now that I was posting on my own website titled jenchicago.com. But, uh, that's clearly not what this interview is about. It's about what I'm doing on Chicago now. So, so yes, there, there are some, but it's, um, you know, it's, it's been a little while and, and over the winter I took a little break in Texas. So less videos than, uh, you know, there's, there, there might be a little dust on my blog. Well, okay. So I'm beginning to get the gist of what this interview is. And, and it's a multiple thing. So one part of this interview is Jen Chicago takes the Windy City, which is on ChicagoNow.com. Mm -hmm. And another aspect will be JenChicago.com. Yes. Which is your separate website. Yes. And there's a third thing about like what you've been doing in Texas. And then there's a the whole thing about your dating habits. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so, is there a whole thing about my dating habits? I think, you know, if I'm a guy and I'm watching this, that's probably, I would kind of say, Jeff, would you just stop talking and let Jen talk? <laughs> no, no, you're doing great. No, I think if I, I know guys, okay. Well, not as well as I know women, I think. But that's a whole other <laughs> Okay. But so let's come back to, okay. Uh, let's come back to Jen Chicago takes the windy seat. Okay. So if we're talking about that blog, now tell me, what are those blog posts generally like? Events, things to do in Chicago. Things to do, but they are like promo things, okay? Either they, things I've done or things I'd like to do, but not necessarily everything that I've done, yes. Well, all of these, the ones that I read, the first five or six, okay, there's this Oprah thing, there's about a fitness program, there's um, the beauty experience, there's European wax, there's, you know, I mentioned fitness, that was Crosstown Fitness, so, candidly, because I, little plug, you know, I do, I do interviewing, I've done like 800 of my own shows, and so usually I have a tough politician on the other side. Now I've got this beautiful woman, so it's a little different, okay? I don't mean to put you on the spot. No, I, you, I, I, I think I can take it. Sexist or something, but <laughs> uh, the point is, but it's a little different. So I'm, I'm doing this interview not of a politician, but, but of a young lady who does it seems like your posts are promos. It almost seems like somebody might have sent you press releases telling me about these things, and you in turn are putting the gist of this and maybe making the event or the release a little more interesting on your blog post. Is that kind of what's happening, or am I getting? Yeah, it? no, that's 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 accurate. Certainly, yeah, certainly lately. Not, excuse me, but they're not all events. What you were saying, because the Oprah thing is, I think Oprah was looking for people it was like a casting thing mm -hmm. you must have seen a press release and you're telling people and i think it's a service it's good people may want to sort of audition for this oprah show they might want to be on that show and then they know that oprah's looking or they might want a good place to get european wax whatever that is i have no idea okay but you don't want to sure. know it's painful I don't. <laughs> is it well we'll come back to that okay. all right or, I, or they might want to know about body fitness so you're doing that but might I ask, just because I'm just a little curious, are you paid by these entities for doing this? You're not. You're just like doing them a favor of letting people know about their thing they're trying to promote, and you're letting your readers know. You're doing them a favor of letting them know about this promotional deal. Yeah. And you're not any money on this at all. Is that right? That is correct. I no, I don't make money off that. I don't make money uh, at, at all off anything I do for Chicago now. So. But do you have like a PR firm? So if somebody sees this says, oh, Jen's really good at promoting things, and maybe we'll contact her and she'll do our PR campaign. Is that possible? Do you do that sort of thing? I do. I do. But I, I do that on my own website. I didn't really know if it would be a conflict of interest with Chicago now. So I kind of just, um, you know, and I, I have so many people in Chicago, a, a lot of nonprofits. It does seem like the last ones have been um, – 
probably uh, on the superficial side, but um, you know, there's a lot of nonprofits that would come to me, and you know, I don't know if you've experienced this, but um, being someone that writes, uh, promotes, that creates media for people, um, you know, there there is that conflict where people are constantly coming to you wanting to get in front of your audience, but you know, maybe they have a good cause or it's this new thing that's just open. So, um, so I really made, you know, the Chicago now just kind of be, you know, people that know me that, um, want to, you know, tell my audience something that they're working on. Um, a lot of times I, you know, I will, if I look at it and I think it's, you know, something people might be interested in, then I'll go ahead and post about it. But, um, yeah, yeah, you, I, I definitely need to get one of my videos. I'm, I'm going to get it before before you put, post this video. I'll make sure I have a, a more recent uh, video of myself up there because that's that's really my sweet spot or what I love to do. When you say up there, you mean on ChicagoNow.com? Uh -huh. Yes. I don't see. I mean, I can't speak for ChicagoNow.com, but I don't see why. I haven't read the rules. Is there something about you can't put up a video that shows you doing what you do that people might want to hear about? I can't see any problem. I mean... Just tell them if anybody gives you any static, say Jeff said to do it. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's not it's not really that. It's that, um, you know, just a lot of times I, I will post those videos on my own site, so I didn't want to double post, and then it just kind of, you kind of get into a rhythm of... No, double post a little bit. I mean, people watching this, they should know, okay, they've gone to, they're watching this, and I'm, they're going to my site, I think, if we do this right. So they've gone... That's right. I'm putting this up on my site, which is, uh, and my site is chicagonow.com slash public affairs. And usually I do political postings, but they go there and then they see this interview. But I did do an interview um, about six months ago with a young novelist named Hannah Petard. So that's a little plug because people reading this can also go to youtube.com slash reading this on my blog, go to youtube.com slash public affairs TV which is sort of my public, my channel on YouTube. Mm -hmm. All of my TV shows, which are done weekly and are mostly political interview shows, are up there for the last four years. But Hannah Petard was not a politician. She's a novelist, young novelist, who teaches at fiction at DePaul, and she's published two books. And so I just happened to see her doing a reading and liked it. And so I'm saying this is kind of in the same genre, this interview of you. Sure, yeah. You with Hannah Petard. I think you gals, if I can use that expression, you young ladies should get together because you now have this comment of being in a, What you have is this pond that you were both interviewed sort of in a video by yeah. Jeff Brooks, her in a, you know. Very which, elite group, yes. Probably <laughs> up on my show sometime, I think. I yeah, think. that'd be awesome. Okay, so back to what you're about. And so, so yeah, people, they'll come here. If this works right, we're going to get this video posted. They'll see that, and then they'll say, Oh, I'm going to go look at Jen Chicago takes the Windy City, and then they'll go to one of your posts, and then they'll say, oh, click that on, and oh, there's that video that Jen was talking about, right? Exactly. And this is exactly how it's supposed to work. <laughs> Jimmy Greenfield, who's this genius over at ChicagoNow.com, we both know him. Jimmy is yes. like our community leader, right? Yes. Yeah, right? Yeah, and he's he says super this is work excited great. and organized and cool, and, and I thought it was a great idea. All right, so... And then people are going to see that, and they're going to say, oh, well, Jeff's okay with politics, but the real star here, okay, the real star here is Jen, right? Okay. I don't know about that, but a girl okay. can hope, sure. All right, so so we've covered these these sort of things that go up on your post. I mean, up on your, no, go up on the ChicagoNow.com blog, and then if people go over to jenchicago.com, they're going to see more of these events posts that are that are posts about events that you've either gone to or restaurants you've gone to and you shoot yeah. this video because like wherever you go, you just like grab your, we call it a video cam these days, camera, camcorder. Yeah, a camera phone. Camera phone. Yes. Wait, you just take you like a smartphone that has a camera? Like I can maybe, I'm holding this up here if I don't know if I, don't I can know. see it. This video that people are going to see, are they going to see it just like it is? It's mostly you, like I'm seeing it, and there's this little picture of me? Or what will they see on this video? In this video, it should be a split screen. So 
Yeah, it should be me on one side and you on the other side through the in duration of the... Uh, we're 50-50. We're sort of community property here. Exactly. Studio. You got All it. Right. So, so if I hold that up, you're telling me that's the that's the video camera that you use to do a lot of these shoots. A lot of them. I mean, I I, I have produced for, you know, I've, I've produced and hosted um, for 24-7 Chicago on NBC Chicago. Um, so, I mean, I've... I've produced on the top, you know, well, it's probably not the top, you know, but a, a very high level of production, TV quality. Um, and I've, like I said, I've also used my phone. I, um, I love them both. They have their, you know, they have their differences, but, um, you know, I think sometimes people definitely act differently when you have, you know, a big camera crew and you know everyone sometimes I just like the authenticity of not asking the waiter before you know I'm some like oh look at how delicious my steak is isn't this steak delicious you know you don't even ask them you just kind of get them right on the spot because sometimes when you bring in that big crew and you know people sit up straight and they tell you their you know two minute elevator speech and they're using a vernacular that normal people don't understand because they're kind of nervous. So they're just saying that thing that they always say at cocktail parties. And, um, so I just really have an affinity for just kind of using my phone. I think it gives an authenticity that, that, um, I personally enjoy. Um, and, um, yeah, yeah, I guess, I mean, I guess that's, that's just, you know, uh, it's got, I've got that little artistic kind of like, I don't want anyone to touch my art, man. You know, like I, I can be like that sometimes. So, yeah. Well, I mean, no, I understand. I totally get it. So you're, um, I mean, but you mentioned you do your your producer for twenty four seven. Well, I was I was doing that. Mm -hmm. was, was that NBC? Did you say? Uh huh. NBC yeah, or? NBC Chicago. Tell us a little bit about this. Not everybody may know about that. Oh, what it's is, a it's a great is, show. What is? What, when does it air and what is it about? Um, it airs Saturday nights after um, Saturday Night Live. And um, it's just an about, you know, about town. There's a lot of celebrity interviews. There's, um, you know, so big... Is Channel 5 in Chicago, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. And the name of the program is? 24-7 Chicago. Okay. And it's like, so Saturday Night Live in Chicago, Central Standard Time goes 1030 to 12. This yeah. is going to go from midnight to twelve thirty. Um, actually, it starts at twelve thirty. So there's one show in between. <laughs> there's one show in between there. Twelve thirty to one. Yes. Right. Yeah. Half hour. Mm -hmm. And if they Google, if they Google, the name is twenty four seven Chicago. Yep. So if they Google that, they might even find it on YouTube or wherever. Oh yeah, shows yeah. Some of the episodes are are certainly on um... maybe NBC. It may be even NBC five may post these things on their own site which is probably something tricky like NBC.com or something like that. Does that sound right? You would uh, know. You'd yeah, there, you but. know what? I have not seen them on um, NBC's main page. I think that's probably, that's probably uh, you know, a little more a little more big time or something like that. But, but oh, no, oh no, they made a mistake like big time. And I'm going to talk to <laughs> the show 24 uh, seven has their own website and you know, they have their okay. own channel. Okay. So they, they posted a lot of episodes like that. So when were, you doing, when were you doing the show mostly? Um, probably about two years ago. Yeah. And you know, it's just, um, I, I can sense the question coming. Um, which was which would be I'd like to see what question I have that's or, coming or out. or maybe or maybe I'm I'm wrongly no, anticipating so, yeah, just, but just be spontaneous Go you know ahead. why why would you not, why would I not continue to be doing something like that and no, um what can ask that but now that you asked <laughs> oh no I, I it's funny because I, I felt like I'm all I feel like that's where he's going with this it's like okay so that was cool I mean it was really cool and I really enjoyed it um but you know there everything takes money and um it takes money to produce that show and it takes sponsorship dollars to produce that show and everything that I've learned about you know doing video I mean it's just like you know I think sometimes people especially when they see me just using my phone they're just like oh that's you know so easy but it's it's um 
really, everyone knows how to press a red button, but everyone knows how important video is and people don't do it because there's so much more involved um, with that. And especially if you're going to do something like on television, you really have to get sponsorship dollars, which means, you know, running around, talking to people, telling them what they're going to get, you know, how this is going to work out, what the episode's going to look like, how their brand's going to benefit from it. And it's really, it's a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of work. You know, it's, it's, um, that was a really, you know, it's a really hands-on show. The, the, the gal that runs it, Katie Kiyosh, um, she's just fantastic and just works tirelessly on it. And, um, you know, that, again, to kind of go back to my little artist, it's like, I have that streak where I kind of just want to, I, I, I just, uh, I don't know that I want all that direction all the time. I mean, sometimes I just want to go and kind of, you know, do my own thing, do it the way that I want to do it. I don't want, you know, to have to send it through 12 people to, um, edit it before. And again, I love the show. I think Katie does an amazing job on it, you know, but it just makes sense that by the time you have to get a bunch of people to look at it, edit it, review it. I like this. Could you get the manager in there? This and that. It's not, it's not what you, it doesn't have that, you know, it has more of a, much more of a polished feeling. And so it's just different. Um, I, I, I don't know. I've just noticed about myself. I, I like to, um, I really like to speak from my heart. Um, I also have a, another website Jen, that's my name, just Jen Canodal. And I mean, I just really talk about deep existential issues that I'm going through and like, what's the purpose of life and all this stuff. So, um, it's really an, evo it's really been like kind of an evolution of, you know, thinking, um, oh, interviewing celebrities, that's like the best thing ever. And then, you know, you get there and you're like, Actually, I think I want to interview like, you know, native people that aren't so polished. You know, I, I, I think that's kind of where I'm leading. I really have a passion for travel and um, I'm trying to do more of that. And um, I, I think that's I, I think maybe I'm I, I gravitate towards not so polished a lot of time. So, so where did you just mention your third website? <laughs> Which is Jen Canodal. And how do you spell Canodal so people could know if they're going there? K N O E D L. Yeah, dot com. Jen, J E N. Mm -hmm. Space. K N. Nope, no space. Yeah. K N O D. O E. K N O. E is in Edward, D is in David, L is in Lewis. So K N O E D L. K-N-O-E-D-L. <laughs> Six letters, right? That's right. Say it one more time. Jen, J-E-N, K-N-O-E-D-L. Okay? That's right. We got okay. it. Jen Canodal. Yeah, but that's that's just for the deep stuff. You want to, you know, you want to keep it light? <laughs> yeah, go to the other ones. Well, like how deep are you, Jen? I mean, when you say that, because let's go back a little bit. Like when you were at this show, 24-7 Chicago, uh -huh. you said you left about two years ago. So how long were you doing it before you left? Um, a few years. Yeah. I was so fortunate because I, I was running around making, I come from a corporate marketing background. Um, and I was making really good money, but I, I wasn't happy. And I decided that I wanted to host an international travel show and I really hadn't done much travel and had never lived anywhere else. But, um, I just decided that I just had visited Chicago and I loved it. I, I just felt like Chicago appreciated me in a way that my hometown doesn't. Um, that's the truth. Uh, everyone just loves me there. I can't explain it. I mean, just when I'm there, it's like, I just feel like people appreciate my personality more so than they do. More than they did in your hometown, which where is your hometown? Austin, Texas. So you started out, did you grow up in Austin? I did. Mm -hmm. Born and raised. When were, you, when were you born and raised there, if I might ask? Um... Approximately, like, just ballpark, you know. Like. Well, it was my birthday um, two days ago, and so um, I... Happy birthday. Thank you. I know. I was like, why did I say that? Because I was, yeah, just going to say, I, I, it's not a problem. I'm 37, so it was 1977. 37. Yeah. Ah, okay. So you were born during the, during the Carter presidency. You might remember that. Oh, I mean, yeah. right. Yes, I forgot. We're going to make every. <laughs> we're going to bring everything. I'm thinking because there was the great malaise, and... You might remember this Carter, that was the problem. He had sort of, you might not know this because you were only like 
1973 when he left the presidency, probably, if you're born in 1977. But he had this malaise, and um, he only served one term. Ronald Reagan came in, and everybody, well, we won't go into detail, but I was just thinking because it was at malaise, and that's when you were born in Austin, right? Yeah. Which kind of ties in because George Bush, we won't go into that, but George yeah. Bush was governor, as you know. As I do know, yes. For older, and he was governor twice of Texas, and of course, the capital of Texas would be? Austin. Austin. Okay, so, <laughs> no. so now we're putting this together. So just to go back a little bit to give people an idea about Jen. So you went to high school, you went to school, probably public schools, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you graduated there in like, well, I don't know, like 95. Seniors, 95. Senior, what was it? Who, who 95. Was it? <laughs> what was that? Seniors, Oh, 95? yes, I was a cheerleader. So we, seniors, 95. You were a cheerleader? Of course, Yeah. I could tell because you kind of, and I mean that, as a that you kind of look like a cheerleader, but I mean that's that is a compliment. I Good. <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't said anything too deep yet. Some were cheerleaders, it turns out. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a little joke. People say sometimes some of my best friends are, you know, some right. of my best girlfriends. It's a little. It's a very little joke. It's so <laughs> little you almost didn't notice. It's <laughs> so, okay. So you you're a cheerleader and. Um, or did you go on to college for that? I did. I did. I um, I went to UT for a semester, but it was it was too big for me. I was in classes with five, six hundred people, and I just um, I just don't learn that way. So there was a small college, um, a private school down the road called St. Edwards University, still in Austin. And I went there, and I had class sizes of thirty, and I liked that. And I graduated with a business degree, um, and got a good job, and got another good job, and. Wait, you know, tell us a little bit about those. So UT, for those who don't know, that would be University of Texas in Austin. Pretty big school, right? That's right. What's Is that like the sign for Texas? Oh, yeah, or? that's the Longhorns. Oh, Longhorns. Oh, I forgot. You know, yeah. It's Texas Long, a great football team. Yes, very Did good. Did you feel like trying to become a cheerleader for University of Texas? You know what? I didn't. Um, I, and, you know, it could be remake the history because then it would kind of deal with the big school kind of thing. Because you'd have a smaller group of friends, guys and girls who were cheerleaders, right? Mm -hmm. And they'd go out, you know, and smoke dope. No, I'm probably not. Whatever they did <laughs> in the football team, the cheerleaders. This interview is probably going to be censored. <laughs> <laughs> You're not we're, saying anything Austinites aren't used to hearing, so. No, well, they do smoke dope. Okay, they're, you know, it's a, yeah. it's a college culture, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, Plus, it's no, Austin, it, right. Yes, and it's Austin. It was just like one of the most progressive towns it's almost as progressive as Seattle, probably. You yeah. know, Seattle is really progressive. I'm mm -hmm. using it in the political sense. You know, sure. progressive meaning left, far left. Yeah. Okay. In case anybody watching this is so confused now, they don't know what this is about. Right. But it's like, okay, so tell us a little bit. You left then St. Edwards. St. Edwards, right? Yes, graduated from St. Edwards. Tell I was a cheerleader at St. Edwards. You were a cheerleader there. Yes, no, yes. Well, very um, so that was kind of, this is out of left field, but do you happen to have your old cheerleading? I do. Uniform? I do. I do. I have them. And I you have to be wearing it right now. Right? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. I, I, I... Thinking if you were, and we could just change the camera setup a little yeah. bit. Yeah. No, so, I don't. They're in a box you, somewhere. There. Would you bring it back to Chicago when you come back? Um, I had my pom poms in Chicago just because you just never, you'd be surprised how often you need pom poms. Yeah. I know, but we'd like to see you in there. <laughs> well, you know, I was on the Steve Harvey show, and um, I, well, it wasn't my original costume because they didn't give us enough time. But yeah, we, I, I got to bring my pom poms, and I was on his Halloween episode for being. Um, we, you, I dressed up like a cheerleader with my girlfriend. Dressed up so. like a cheerleader, so you have the uniform. It was a different uniform because uh, we didn't he, we didn't have yeah. enough time. Yeah, so anyhow. Right, so bring it back, and we'll do a separate show on All that. Right. I will do it on public affairs. Okay. <laughs> Most guys have a thing about cheerleaders and cheerleader uniforms. Yes. Almost as much, almost as, much as like like Catholic girls' school uniforms. Yeah. Those? Yeah. Nurses. I, nurses. No, no, no. <laughs> it's not that. <laughs> you're making it into something. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't, I thought that's the where you're going with that. There's the plaid, those plaid skirts, white blouse, knee, socks, patent leather shoes. Yes. There was even a play about that. Do patent leather shoes reflect up? You know that? 
You never <laughs> no. no. We're getting rather far afield. So getting back to <laughs> communications and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, tell us a little bit about that when you came out of St. Edwards. Um, you know, I just... I had always wanted to really do something in entertainment, but um, my parents told me that I was smart and I should get a degree and I could mess around with that stuff when I got my degree. And so, you know, I listened to them and I got my degree, but then I got a good job at um, Broadwing, a telecommunications company, and I was making really good money right out of college. And then I got another good job. And, um, Where was that? Um, the one after Broadwing was another software company called Kraken. They're not around anymore. And then after that, was, that, huh? Was that in Austin where you were? Yep. Mm -hmm. so, that was in Austin also. Keep going. Sorry. I didn't mean to And then, uh, an ad agency, gsd and &M, Okay. And then IBM. Wow. And, um, then that was really kind of, you know, then I started, I, I really was kind of depressed to be honest. Um, it, it was, it was a great job and I liked the people that I worked with. I just felt like I could be doing so much more and, um, just really what started were you doing, just what were you doing for IBM when you were, when you were there? Um, I was a marketing project manager for, um, you know, worldwide software group. So, so you were marketing software pretty much and, and worldwide. And, like, why would you be depressed? It sounds like a really fantastic job. It does. Seriously. It does sound like that. So yeah. So tell us why it wasn't fantastic. Um, it just, um, it, uh, you know, I'm, I'm like, scared, people, you know, it's like, I don't want to offend any, it just, it just wasn't, I, I just didn't get to be creative. I just didn't feel that my ideas were appreciated. I really just felt like. Um, you know, you're kind of groomed to just do one little thing and not really, I, I found myself becoming someone that I wasn't, which was someone that was kind of introverted because it was just, I just kind of wanted to stay under the radar. I really didn't want to, I just wasn't inspired and I didn't really want to climb the ladder and, um, she so left IBM. Yeah, what I was actually you, going to, that, that she left IBM. 2008. 2008, and that's yeah. when you went, did you go to 24-7 um, Chicago then? Or no, just... no, I, I just moved to Chicago with my savings and my unemployment, and, you know, I was just like, Oprah's going to find me for sure, because this is what I'm supposed to be doing, so. Well, who was going to find you for sure? Oprah. Oh, well, Oprah. Is that why you moved here, because Oprah was here? And you're no, seriously? no, I just. How did you pick Chicago, seriously? I had honestly, I had visited numerous places and I just, I, I visited Chicago and, um, just the city loves me. I, I don't know. I mean, I, well, they just, have, I, you know, I was talking to a few people earlier in the day and they were walking around. I was in a loop really. And this really happened seriously. Okay. I'm walking around and this guy comes up to me and said like, where's Jen? Where's Jen? You know, Jen, Chicago, where is she? And I said, I don't know, but I'm going to be speaking to her tonight. He said, oh, can I come over and, you know, see her on the I don't Skype? believe you at all. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And like 10, 15, 20 people. So, Jim, they're kind of waiting for you. Yeah. So, like, when coming back, that's a slight distraction but and digression. Uh, so, when are you coming back to Chicago from Texas? Because people watching this may not realize you are in Texas right now. I am. I am in Texas. Where, My where, where Texas? Um, right – Right now I'm in the woodlands, but, um, I, my grandmother recently broke her hip. So I have sure. been caring Taking for care. her a little bit. Yeah. So she's going to move in with my parents. They are doing construction on their house so that she can move in with them. And, um, I'm watching her in the meantime, kind of just caring okay. for her in the meantime. So is that in the woodlands right now? It's is that in where Bryan. Your so it's in, it's in a uh, college station where A&M is. Right. Texas at the Aggies. Okay, yeah, I know yeah, that. gig them. It's Actually, the total opposite. <laughs> used to have a very good economics department. Seriously, Texas A&M. Yeah. It was a University of Chicago satellite. Is that oh. free market kind of stuff? Seriously, there are sort of there were satellites of the University of Chicago economics department, Texas A&M. I actually know somebody who taught there. So the Aggies, really, it's nice. It's good. You're in College Station. You're in good hands. They're very nice. And my, my grandfather taught there. He's he's since passed, but he, he taught there. So my grandmother still lives there, um, you know, for the so time. So that's where you are right now. You were coming. We were bringing um, this to people throughout, really. Because people, if they go to YouTube.com slash Public Affairs TV, well, that's our YouTube channel. And people watch that show from China, seriously. Nice. Or, seriously, because. I believe you. We, I did 
people should know. I did six shows with Barack Obama, six one half hour shows. Wow. And you're now on probably longer than a half an hour. So you're actually better than Barack Obama in that sense. Wow. Seriously, I'm not fooling around. My parents if, would have to agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, are you slamming Barack? Is that a I'm not. I wouldn't do that. Are upset with Barack? Why are they upset with him? Uh, you know, they're, they're just really strong Christians and they just don't, they just kind of think he does his own thing. He's kind of well, think- you know, made that comment when he was running for president, you know, which I'm talking about in 2008 and he was, he was at a fundraiser. It's funny because we're talking about smartphones before and part of the problem now, even then in 2008, it has a recorder in there and people say no cameras and they think, you know, there's no cameras there, but somebody's in this crowd of fundraisers. And Brock says something like, well, you know, he was talking about people who cling to their guns and their religion. Seriously. He wouldn't say that if he were, like, giving a major speech, you know, going out to 200 million people. And somebody just held up their little smartphone. I know they had audio and they may have had video. So I could see your parents, if they're fairly religious, don't want to be known as people. Well, he wasn't saying it in a sense. Your parents may not cling to your guns, but they do cling to their religion in the sense that they have a faith. Right? Yes. And he, they may have felt he was mocking them. Um, you know, it wasn't that. just that. It's really just been um, just kind of his actions. They just kind of think that he makes, um, you know, decisions that do not support the Constitution, that he does I mean, things I mean, without I following hear. the Constitution and, you know, that they've really, you know, squeezed God out of the picture and... Um, so, so it, they, it's certainly not just one thing. Are your parents Tea Party people, would you say, or, you know, because they're people who believe deeply in the Constitution, and your parents may be Tea Party, there's nothing wrong with that, I was just curious, would you classify them as Tea Party types? Um, I, I don't know, I mean, I, I don't, I don't think so, um, They you know, believe in the Constitution, though, they, and they think that Brock... Obama is not following the Constitution as much as he should. Would that be fair? That That's a very fair statement, yes. And what about you? Do you think that Brock is following the Constitution as much as he should? Um, well, no. I mean, I do think that um, there... But I, I think so many... I mean, really, so few politicians follow the Constitution anymore. Um, you know, but it's like, man, there's so much to worry about in this lifetime. It just... You know, I, so, so, no, I mean, no, I, I, I think he's made some decisions that, I mean, just, I don't, you know, I haven't met him. I can't judge his heart. I don't know what his intention is, but I do know that I feel that he's done some things that, um, you know, the people that created our constitution were, you know, law abiding, God fearing, um, men and, um, you know, just, just really the whole taking um, of Christianity out of our um, politics, I don't think is, has really boded well for us, I guess. So, sure. but don't get You're- me started po- talking politics. Cause I mean, I'm really, um, I, I've spent my time in best. I, I've definitely invested my time in other, uh, in other <laughs> subjects of interest um, or uh, of study. So I, I usually just try to stay out of political conversations. I think what we have here is, I think we have a prototype. You know the word prototype, right? I do, yes. I think we got good chemistry here for doing a TV show. Yeah? And I think seriously, and I'm not kidding now, okay? If we just took this and say, see, we're not spending a lot of time preparing for this. We're not polishing it. And I'm going to give you the first name. It's Jen and Jeff, okay? Okay. Okay. And we cut it down to a half an hour. And we bring somebody on, and you and I, you know, put them in between us. And we just have this kind of casual conversation. And it could be somebody that's closer to your specialty. But I think it would be good for you and me and that person to mix it up. And then it could be a person closer to my specialty. And I I think seriously that would possibly be... See, and I can ask the layman questions, right? What the... what. The people that don't study politics and don't always keep it, they just kind of have like, I mean, you know, that's why I, I, and, and I do, I'm my, I look up to my parents. So a lot of what they say, I kind of, I'm like, yeah, that sounds good. You know? So, so I definitely, um, do claim not to really follow 
follow it so much. It, it, it is one of those situations that, gosh, there just doesn't seem like there's enough time to be carrying on with everything that you're interested in. So got to make some decisions. Well, you know, there is a show. You mentioned M- you mentioned NBC. You might know this show on uh, MSNBC, and it's called Morning Joe. Have you ever heard of that show? I have heard of it. Yeah, and it's with Joe Scarborough, who's a former conservative Republican congressman, and he's one of the main anchors. And the other is Mika Brzezinski, and Mika's the daughter of, uh, I can't forget his first name, but Brzezinski, the guy who was actually, Terry goes back to Carter, he was the national, Brzezinski, forget his first name, sadly, I'm looking silly. Uh, was the national security advisor, Jimmy Carter. So see this kind of chemistry we have. You were born in the Carter administration. Like, and that relates to Mika Brzezinski. She's a very attractive, smart, interesting woman, and they have really good chemistry. They're probably, like, married to separate people, or they're both divorced. I don't even know what <laughs> The point is, during, on the show, they have good chemistry, and they have different backgrounds. Um, and see, we're doing the same thing. Yes. And well, we're coming to, if we went to NBC, we could be so much less expensive. Than <laughs> oh, could, yeah, I know. And possibly better, because we're, in a sense, like if you watch this, this is a much more hip conversation. I mean, that's like on a different level. Right. You know, the important demographic for TV these days, it's the millennials, right? Right. Which are people under 34, if I understand that definition. Sadly, you're almost, you're a little bit outside the millennial category. I mean, you are young, but I don't know. Are you feeling old, Jim, because you're no longer a millennial? You know what? I was just telling someone the other day, I mean, um, total package, I've never been better. I mean, you know, maybe I've been a little thinner, maybe... um... Could you show us? Could you, like, stand up or something? (laughs) Seriously. This is like spontaneous TV. And somebody watching that, they're going to want to see, like, okay. They, you know, you've heard of Match.com, right? Yes. Look. Oh, that's not quite. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this? Who this have you is, introduced This is Samson. Me? He stars in many yeah. of my videos as well. Yeah. Well, Samson, nice to meet you, Samson. Yeah. Well, no, but if you're on Match.com, are you, do you happen to be on Match.com by any chance? I am on ChristianMingle.com. Oh, okay. So you know this. You're single, right? Yes. Your single is looking to mingle on Christian mingles. Um, more get married, but you know, I don't, I, yeah. I don't know that they have a Christian Mary. That'd probably be too scary for people. Wait, is Christian? So to be on Christian mingles, you have to be somebody who, like takes an oath you want to get married, as opposed to just mingling. Um, you don't have to, but I most of the Christian mingles would want to get married. You know, I mean, I'm sure there's some, you know, yahoos on there that are trying to do something uh, other than that. But it's, it's, um... It's, some way, excuse me, what was the word you used? Some what? Some yahoos? <laughs> yeah, I'm all what? I don't know what word. Yeah, I some yahoos. Yahoo. Do you mean yahoos? Um, I don't know. What do you mean by yahoos? What's the definition of a yahoo? I just never heard of a yahoo. Um, I guess just, you know... Yeah, just kind of goofy, 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 crazy people that are doing their own thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you would be wasting your time uh, being on Christian. Christian, how long have you been on Christian Mingles? Um, s- gosh, maybe like a month. Oh, just recent. Yeah. What did you do before? Have you been single all of your life, or were you yes. married? Yes. No, no, I've been single the whole time. What did you do to find dates before Christian Mingles? Um. I just went out. I just went out. Um, yeah. Like to bars? And yeah. Uh-huh. You met so, people at first. So mm-hmm. what motivated you to go to Christian Mingles at this point in your career? I really wanted a man that was accountable to, you know, God. A man that was looking to please someone more than he was looking to please himself. And um, someone... You're not finding that if you're not finding that at, like... Mothers or Butch McGuire's or I'm not. I'm do you not. go to Mothers or Butch McGuire's on? Divisions? Um, I have been in them. They're not. I'm more of a Mastro's Tavern kind of girl. Mastro's Tavern, like where's that? Uh, they're downtown, you know, River North, Gold Coast. Right. Okay. And what? So what's different between them and like Mothers or Butch McGuire's? What's Mastro's Tavern like? 
Uh, well, they're they're two different places, but both of them are you know nice steakhouse. Is that the Mastro's? That's the name of the place, Mastro's. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How do you spell that? M A S T R O S. Yep. And what's the other one? Just Tavern or Tavern? Yeah, you know Tavern. It's in the Viagra Triangle. Oh yeah, no, I didn't know about the Viagra Triangle. Tavern. Wait, Tavern? Isn't it Tavern on Rush Street? Isn't yeah, the... exactly. Oh, you say Tavern? You mean Tavern on Rush Street? I'm sorry, I, yeah. you know, you know the Tavern. How we call it? Uh, tavern. Where, you just mentioned the Viagra Triangle. I think a lot of people would find that interesting. Like, I'm sure. That? Oh yeah, what is that's Triangle. What is that? What is that? How did that get that name? Um, I guess there, you know, it's what I was told when I moved here is that it, there is a lot of, um, older, successful, um, well, that was not the right word I was going to use. Have money. Men that have money and, and, and younger that girls okay, that are looking for guys girls. that have money. What? Let's go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm older sorry. men that have money and younger women that are looking for men that have money. Okay, but you're not, well, you were going to, okay, and where is this geographically? Where is this? Um, My, it's uh, right downtown in, you know, a, an area called Gold Coast in downtown Chicago. And give us some tweets because maybe there's somebody watching this who's coming from Austin. They've just arrived. Oh, they it's, it's people watching line. gold. Yeah, it's. No, but where is geographically? Where is this? Like what streets? It's on Rush Street. Um, Rush Street. Is it like near, what would be an east-west street that it's near? Chicago? It's Chicago. It's between Chicago and Division. And yeah. it's on like Rush? Yes, exactly. Okay. And the, and one of the places that they would go to would be Maestro's? Not, no, Mastro's. Mastro's yeah. is another place I like, yeah. And that's in River North. That's on like uh, Dearborn okay. and Huron but you or were, something. But you weren't going to places in the Viagra Triangle, were you? Or? Yeah. You were going? I mean, like, why? Because you weren't going to find a guy with money, were you? No, um, really, it's only been recently that I decided I wanted to get married. <laughs> we're getting so deep in this. I only recently decided that I wanted to get married, I think, when I just, the past years, I just knew that if I were to get married, it would have to be something different than what I saw other people doing. I really don't see a lot of couples that look like they're in edifying relationships. I hear men and women saying, you know, don't tell my husband, don't tell my wife. And, you know, I feel like that's supposed to be your best friend and it becomes this person that you hide everything from. And so I just decided, I, I just decided I didn't care if I get married or not. Um, but I think being back in Texas and being around my parents and just seeing with new eyes how loving they are to each other and what where that stems from. And I think it just, I really think it stems from their faith because, you know, if they're, they're, always, they're usually always sweet to each other, but just the fact that if one of them were to, you know, be short or have a temper or just do something, it's, you know, you're, I guess, because they both try to live biblical lives that they do what they are, what Jesus, what Christ, the God calls them to do versus what they feel justified to do. So, um, it just really kind of changes everything. I think, you know, it, no, I, I would tell people when I went out all the time because I just wanted to have a, I just wanted to have fun and those places are nice. You don't have, um, you know, everyone has all your teeth that people, you know, dress nice and smell good and, you know, want to take you here and there. So it's just like a place to just be fun. But I think things are pretty much on the surface there. Um, and I think that I was trying to find a guy that was nice and cute. And then like, you know, I think in the back of my mind, I thought if I could find a guy nice and cute and then we loved each other, then eventually, of course he'd, you know, become a strong Christian and blah, 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 whatever. But, um, you know, you can't change people, and and when you when you bet on being able to change people, I don't think I don't think that turns out well. So, so now I've really refocused. I'm like the first thing on my list is that you know he's a Christian and he puts his faith in Christ and tries to live a life that's pleasing to God. And um, I mean, it changes every it changes everything. It, some things. I mean, I'll I'll be honest that the, the guys um, say on the website are not as handsome as they are um, at the places I used to go. They're just they're just not, and they don't seem like maybe they're 
uh, for the most part, I'm obviously generalizing, but they don't seem like they, you know, they just don't, they're, they're not striving as much. And it's just a really interesting thing. And if, if this is almost something that I've, I, I kind of came to realize in discussing with my dad, because I was telling him this, like, these guys are nice, but they're not like, I just don't think they're that cute. Um, but I think, excuse me, my dog's coughing. I think that, um, you know, when like God talks about people that have everything, if you have a really great life on this earth, you know, you have a lot of money or you're a celebrity or you're popular or you're tall and handsome or you're skinny and you have big boobs or, you know, whether you're a girl or a guy, but you have a life on this earth that's very comfortable. You don't want something more. You don't have that brokenness of really knowing that this time on earth is not our home, that we were created for something bigger. Um, I, I, I just, uh, so that's been really interesting. Just seeing myself striving for, you know, money and fame and this and that, and just realizing that really, I just, I just want someone to love me. You know, I just want someone to love me. Um, and, and, and love is an action, not just, a feeling. And I think, yes, that's, everyone just thinks, why well, don't, I'm not in love anymore. I don't feel like it anymore or whatever. And, um, I think that's what always scared me about getting into a relationship because I just thought, well, people are just, no one stays together anymore. So why even bother? But I think if you find someone that's like-minded that forever is forever, you have a better chance of, you know, sticking together forever. So but, I mean, do you think, since you're saying the guys on this site are generally not as handsome, as cute, as attractive physically as these people you've known before, um, do you think you're settling? Do you think you should look for a guy who has, you know, your preference in terms of religion, that he's Christian, he has a deep belief in God, and, uh, and, and Jesus affects his life, and... And I'm being serious now. Yeah. So, but you, you think you might want to find a guy, but who's also, you know, attractive physically to you. Well, hopefully and I get it, it all, right? I mean, that's... I know, saying the guys on the site, the Christian Mingle site, are generally less physically attractive, you're telling me. So you're kind of settling. Maybe you should look, you know, go to Match, where you haven't tried that, right? Match. No. Com. Because it's broader, more inclusive. And then just put it down in your profile that, you know, what you're looking for is somebody who's got a strong religious conviction. Yeah. And then also handsome and, you know, attractive and smart and fun to be around and all those things. I mean, you know, drop a profile of what you want that includes these other things that you have not been talking about before. So you've been in these socializing places, you know, on Viagra Triangle. And, and I'm that not, sounds horrible. <laughs> it's not I'm, I'm not. I'm just saying. But it's okay. There are some women there who were looking for a guy with money. That's all they wanted. And then there was Jim. You know, not looking for that. But these were nice places. As you said, people have all their teeth and guys do have money and they dress well and so forth. But you were not looking, I don't think, for somebody just with a lot of money. You're looking for the guy who's religious and has some deep conviction and so forth. Well, it's also handsome. And I'm just saying maybe, you know, I, I mean, and there could be other, I don't know the other sites, but there could be other online sites that are less specialized religiously, but yet still would have some people, presumably, who have some religious values similar to yours. I'm just suggesting maybe you yeah. want to try that. And then you come back and we'll do a TV show about that, seriously. Okay. And we'll talk about Christian Mangos, talk about Match, and maybe some other one. And you can share these experiences and say, hey, and I'm being serious now. I'm really being serious. No, I I'm I actually made a a birthday video yesterday telling everyone thank you and um just you know the flow of me and I'm I'm just walking around with my camera and I'm like thank you everyone and da 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 and this is what I've been up to and I've been watching my grandma and um I'm I want to get married and I want and it just kind of came out but then when I rewatched it I was like you know what I'm I'm not ashamed of that like. I think I thought it was desperate of women to want to get married before. I was just like, I'm an independent woman. I do not need a man. Um, 
but you know, I don't, I don't need one, but I do think that we were created to be together. So, um, I guess just with, you know, and the other sides, I mean, it's an option, but I, I, I just think everyone thinks, I think a lot of times people think that they're Christians because they believe in God, but it's like, It's a totally different thing if someone is actually trying to live a a life that's pleasing to God. And I, it's just amazing how easy it is to get away from that and start being your own God. So if I'm asked, what religious, what religion do you practice? I'm non-denominational. So you're a Christian, but you're really not affiliated with any specific religion. Right. Right. Were you, were your parents affiliated with a specific religion? Um, we started off Catholic, and then when my grandfather died, my mom, you know, moved to a Bible church, and that was really hard for me, but, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, when when I've, I've kind of had this renewed faith um, since I've been, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's the next evolution of my life. Um, in talking with some of my friends, I realized that really so many people have never even read their Bible. They don't know what it said. They just kind of have these hazy ideas of things that they've heard and they're putting things together. And, um, I, I mean, it, you were saying, I'm not kidding. And it really is something that I've been thinking about because like to what you're saying is like, maybe I'm settling because the guys aren't as attractive, but it depends on how you look at it because maybe I was settling just going for an outward shell of someone that's going to be 70 and he's not going to be a nice person. He's going to be very selfish and only care about himself and just doing whatever's good for him. And if he doesn't feel like coming home or he doesn't feel like being faithful or he doesn't feel like whatever, then he'll just do whatever he wants to do. And it would just... Yeah, I, I just don't want to go through that kind of heartache. But you know, I mean, I don't know if you know Eric Zorn. Do you know Eric Zorn? That name sounds familiar. Chicago Tribune columnist, so you might want to read some of his columns. Okay. And I kind of think he's like the father of blogging in Chicago. Oh, wow. Because he was one of the first mainstream columnists to really get into blogging, which was probably before 2000. I don't know. Okay. He set up a lot of people. Uh, with blogs, and I know Eric's. He's been on my TV show. Half of what he does is kind of political, okay. but half of what he does is write about pop culture. Like I'll tell Eric to take a look at this if you put this video up, or I do, and I think he'd write about it because uh, well, because Eric number one is a big. I think you call him a humanist. It's a person who believes in doing good things and being a good person, but doesn't necessarily believe in doing it through a religion. Right. And so it's sort of a secular approach to being good. And I just wondered if you thought you could meet some person who thought there's a larger force, which I think is a lot of what religion is about, or various religions. There's something larger than them. Right. And if for a religious person, it's often following in the path of Jesus Christ. If you're a Christian, following in the path of perhaps Moses. If you're Jewish, I don't know. And then Buddha, et cetera. Right. But all these people are larger than just your individual life. They're spiritual. And in Eric's case, I think, I'll have to speak for himself, I don't know that much about humans. They just accomplish this, but without having a religious figure there. And um, because you said you're non-denominational, which was interesting. Eric is, is, is not secular. I mean, he's not religious in any, any religion. And I've never gone to the gatherings of they have of humanists, whether they just chant Eric Zorn. No, I'm just kidding. Eric, uh. you know. <laughs> but I think it's a serious topic. And I guess, you know, the question for you is, what if you met a humanist who has really said all these things that I just said about doesn't, like, focus on money or even girls or something, you know, focuses on, well, he might like girls or something. He might like guys or whatever. But, and, you know, he has normal social life, but he also thinks a lot about what I'd call spiritual things in terms of what is good, what is right, what is moral. So when you're 70, you don't look back and say, did I do anything? You know, because I think like one of the main thing, thinkings of Christianity is, um, and maybe it comes from Jesus, I don't know, you may know, tis more blessed to give than receive, which sounds kind of trite, but I think if you had that as a guiding force in your life, you kind of go around looking for ways to help people. And 
I think a lot of religion is that. If you go to Match.com, a lot of women, I don't read the guys things, so I don't know. If you read the women profiles, they often say spiritual but not religious. I think that's probably the most popular thing. It is. It's very new age. It's very Oprah-ish. No, but in a sense, you are spiritual but not religious because, well, you're spiritual but not denominational. And is that kind of like being spiritual but not, you know? I don't I mean, think so. Well, what is, what is, is where do you? Where have you where have you gone to church in the last three or four years? Where would you go to, when you go to church? Um, right if it's now, not I'm, personal. No, no. Well, I think personal. we've already passed personal. Yeah, um, a non non denominational church um, out here in the Woodlands called the Fellowship of the Woodlands. Okay. So and, I mean, they've got an amazing band. I'm always like taking pictures. They had a baptism. I mean, it's it's great service. It's a beautiful. Um, church, but we're, we're encouraged to read our Bible. There's, uh, you're encouraged to get into small groups. Um, you know, they're always putting on just a variety of events, but. Is there like a minister there? I mean, where do these people who lead the group get their training from if they're not denominational? Because. They get it from the Bible. But I mean, no, but where do you go? Do you You go? still go to seminary. Yeah. Is it Moody's Bible School or something like that? Or, because that's, Moody's is called the Bible. Moody's, is that what it's called? I don't know. Moody's? Moody's? This dog's driving me nuts. i got to let him out. Yeah, he's shaking up your video. Yeah. You know, like, Here, you get out. Get out. Go. Okay. He's like a, so, like, he's like a baby. So, where, you know, where do these people get their religious training from? Like, if you're Catholic, you go to Catholic. If you're Jewish, you So, for somebody who's non-denominational, is there something called the non-denominational religious training center or something? You know? I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's just called seminary. I I don't know. I, I should look into it because... Um, do you do non-denominational also means deep belief in the Bible? Would that be fair? Yes. It, it means definitely not Catholic, you know, and not Protestant. I mean, it, because it's not about, like, other people. It's just about, like... The Bible. The Bible, yeah. Not about the... Is it about Jesus? Oh, yes, Definitely. Well, but, and what's different? Well, the Catholics obviously believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yeah, and they, the um, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. they also worship saints and the Virgin Mary. Yeah, they can, there's a Pope, and the Pope can, the Pope, and I guess the College of Cardinals. I don't know, does the Pope canonize people, or does he do it with the College of Cardinals? I don't know. What, um, what does it take to become a, a saint? It takes some... You're supposed to have two miracles, and then who decides you're a saint? Is it the Pope or the Pope and his cronies? Or don't kind of like don't they, get me lying not, about Catholicism. What? I don't know. Oh, you don't really like Catholicism? No, no, no. I just you know it, it just I don't think they're encouraged to read their Bible, and I think that's I think I really? I mean I just I think that's a problem. Yes, it's kind of like come to church, I'll tell you what's what, and then go out in the world and and. And I don't think that I need anyone to get in between me and my God. I don't need to tell anyone but God my sins. Not that, you know, I don't, I just, I don't need that middleman. And I, I just, all the Catholics I know, like none of them read their Bible. They, they don't know the first thing about, it's just kind of what they heard. And there just seems to be a lot of rules. It seems to be very legalistic. And so, you know, I mean... I got a full-time job just worrying about my own salvation. I don't know what's what, but I, I mean, all I can do is tell people what I think or what I know or what I've experienced so far. And, um, I just feel a lot closer when I'm reading myself versus going to, um, you know, just the pageantry and the tradition of a mass. So, so, um, just a question or two more, and then we'll tie this up, but um, we'll sort of think about it, bring it all together. Um, <laughs> I don't know how you're going to pull this all together. I don't know, well, it's sort of, but, um, okay, so, so or how are things working out for you on, on ChristianMingles.com? Have you met some guys? Um, I have. Um, it's, it's, it's been very slow going. It's totally different. It's just... It's totally different. I mean, I never wanted to do online dating because I think, you know, I'm a very passionate person. I'm, 
you know, like to meet people in real life. Um, I feel like I don't, you know, video helps like, you know, how we're doing right now. I feel like I have a sense of your personality, but just talking on the phone and, you know, all the, all the back and forth and first you're emailing and then can I call you? And then, you know, it's like, when exactly do you like, you know, start putting effort into it. And then, you know, I really want to be pursued. That's something that, um, I think most women want. So, you know, I, I just want to be pursued. So I find that, um, you know, sometimes you don't know why, you know, you're talking one day and then I never hear, you know, I mean, that, that's happened before. It's just like, I never heard back from them, but it can go quickly in my experience. I mean, you can just like look at somebody and send in, I mean, look at their profile. I think, I assume Christian Mingles would be like match. You have a profile that's available for people to look at. That's a verbal description of you. Yeah. And, is that right? And then you also have pictures. Do you upload pictures? Yes. So it's your pictures. Yes. So if you're a guy, you like, you look at the pictures first. So the pictures look good. Then you read the profile. Right. The profile looks good. Then you send off an email saying, you know, I like you. I think I like you because Y or Z. And, uh, or this sounds like we have this in common. Would you like to get together for coffee? Yeah. And somebody either responds yes, or they might say, well, here's my number. Why don't we talk first? And you talk, and then you just have a coffee date, and either you like each other or you don't. I mean, I guess somebody could say, oh, I want to spend, like, two months emailing you, but I don't think that's typical. Even the back and forth is just, even even the phone calls, you know, I mean, the first getting to know you conversations, always usually like an hour, I mean. No, but you um, don't have to do that, is what I'm saying. Some women just say yes. Let's get together for coffee. Well, it's been difficult because of where, because I'm bouncing around so much. Conversation. Yeah. yeah. So, like right now, are you looking for guys who are close to you in College Station or guys who are close to you in Chicago? I am, up. I'm really open. I'm finding that there's. I mean, I, you could, they could commute. I guess they could fly down. There are people who do this who go 2,000 miles to meet somebody, but your typical person online. I think goes like 15 miles or less. Yeah. And yeah. So, and that's something too. So, so we should clarify this in case somebody is watching this. Uh, what's your plans in terms of coming back to Chicago? Do you think you'll be back in two weeks, two months, two years? What's no. Um, actually my grandmother is planning to move in with my parents in September. So, I mean, they're doing reconstruction on their house, everything. And once again, you know, it was one of these things that, you know, I was visiting with my parents and, and, and Chicago was, it was, it was just getting really complicated because what I wanted to do, I wasn't doing. And then it was like, you know, when you have to start like hustling for business and getting paid for stuff, now your art isn't exactly what you wanted it to be. You know, you're kind of getting commissioned to do something. So it, so I was very confused and I was praying a lot and, and really I, I felt like I'd really lost that closeness when I was in Chicago, just really making a lot of concessions and deciding what I thought was okay and uh, so you got just, out of Chicago and now you put yourself in college station taking care of your grandmother and in a sense you're you know you're 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 what's the word when you um kind of go away from things you're in a retreat yes your own personal retreat yes um, you're sort of being introspective a little bit very and you're sitting there thinking about what you want long term and we're taping this, so to speak, if you call it taping, I say that on a show, on uh, June 14th, 2014, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. So you're saying come September, in about three months, your grandmother will be relocated to be with your parents, right? Yes. So you're tentatively thinking you're probably going to be in College Station for another two to three months until your grandmother. Yeah, leaves. yeah. I've been making some trips to visit Chicago, but it's just been really interesting how, you know... I, I, I went hey, out. There's a guy, we just want to say, and I'm not really doing this like Christian Mingles or Match.com, but it is a service, you know, because like I can do multiple things, right? So we do this TV show called Public Affairs, you know, which people can watch every week. By the way, if they're in the city of Chicago and are looking at this, you can see my show every Monday night at 8.30 on cable channel 21 throughout the city of Chicago. Okay. Nice. And there's a, just to stick in here, because we've covered the entire waterfront here. <laughs> so I will pick up, you know, I said we're taping this on the 14th, and um, this coming Monday, if you're watching this, you would see in Chicago a show with Paul Kersey from the Illinois Policy Institute, a very interesting discussion 
a little bit different from this because Paul is talking on that show about a Supreme Court case. Okay. That involves our governor, Pat Quinn, who is sued by Pam Harris. In a way, it's a religious issue. In a way, not. Because Pam Harris is a mom who had uh, a son who she has a chronic disease problem or something in healthcare that requires almost 24 hours. So she doesn't work other than taking care of her son, which is like a full-time job. And she gets a small stipend, I think, for Medicaid, which they should pay her a lot because if she didn't do it, he would have to be institutionalized, and that would cost the state probably $40,000 a year. So they should pay her, right? It seems right. And a mother taking care of her son, that's pretty good, right? She's not abandoned. Some mothers will just say, this is too much for me. My son's got too many problems. Let somebody else take care of him. And so they decided, somebody did that, what she was doing was really like a union employee. And so a union wanted fees from her, and another union wanted fees, and these SEIU and AFSCME were fighting about it, and they had an election, and the third choice for people like Pam Harris and other parents who were in this situation, we don't want any union, okay? Anyway, the short of it, folks, that went up, and it became a U.S. Supreme Court case, and it will be decided sometime in the next few weeks. And you can learn all about it by watching my show, which is a little different than this sort of thing, okay? Like Match, and then there's Pat Harris suing. <laughs> See how versatile I am? So if you yeah, have to yeah. me, would you tell them? Yeah, this guy Jeff is really good. It'd be Jan and Jeff, I mean Jen and Jeff, sorry. You know, and we're doing like from Christian Mingles to Pam Harris to Governor Quinn to Match. To the to Constitution. Is this the Constitution? The whole schmear. I All mean, of it. really, if anybody can keep up with this. I mean, <laughs> No, but seriously, we could have done, like, you could have 15 shows out of what we've done in the last hour, right? Oh, yeah. For sure. We could, if we could edit this down, like, really simple. And, I don't know, Jim, what would you like for this? I think pay you maybe, I don't know, 30000 a year, me 30000 a year, throw in some small production costs, 100000 covers the whole thing. They That's, like, really inexpensive. That's super like, There's cheap. a show called Chicago Week in Review that Joel Weissman has been doing for, like, the last... 30 years on WTTW, one of the most biased shows it happens to be. Joel's a nice guy. It's just like completely liberal. You would never see like any of the conservatives who work for the Chicago Tribune on that. Like Dennis Burr, he's never been on the show. Jeff Berkowitz, never been on the show. Okay. I'm told their budget is about $500,000. Okay. Oh. 500, can you imagine? Yeah. Weird. And they only do about 25 shows a year. They take a break every other week. It's so exhausting. Wow. I love Joe. I, I love WTTW, just in case I <laughs> missed it. No, but you see the point? Yes. If you were an NBC and they going for ratings, I would watch this. I would watch you, Jen. Seriously. There are like thousands of guys out there just to see your cheerleader. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, right, yeah. I'll have to work that in next time. Yes. Um, where was I? So, okay, so they would see Paul Kersey, and then the next week, state representative. Ron Sandek, who's interesting because he was one, and this ties in with some of what you're doing, and then we'll get back to all of what you're doing, because he's one of the few, one of the three Republican state reps in this in the state house down in Springfield who voted to support state same sex marriage. But showing the kind of guy I am, we covered that, but it wasn't all about that because also important is the state budget and the state tax scheme and. I mean, a lot of people think this is, like, way beyond it. So if you're in, the, like, the Viagra Square, okay, or Triangle, like Square, Viagra <laughs> Triangle, if you were there and you're talking to, like, you're 37, so you're socializing with a guy who's, like, 39, possibly, and, you know, he's working hard to make a living, and his no, like, what's taxes? I don't know. You know, that's something else. And did you know, Jan? I mean, you have a tough time trying to support yourself, too. Do you know what the tax rate is? I'm just curious. Do you know what the individual income tax rate is currently if you make money in Illinois? What's the rate at which you pay taxes on your income to the state of Illinois? Is it 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, 5%? It's like, oh, I no. think the whole it's, thing, doesn't the whole thing come out to like 40%? It does. That's very good. If you took federal taxes and state taxes and property taxes, the whole thing, right. How did you know that? That is like remarkable because it's, I'm not being condescending now. It's like right on the money. And most people don't realize that, that 40% of your earnings 
go to the state, to the government, to the various governments. But I was asking a somewhat different question, to be fair. Yes. Uh, and that question was, what is the rate at which you pay taxes on your income to the state of Illinois, just to the state, and not the sales tax, not the property tax that goes to the county, not the federal tax that goes to the federal government, just that one tax. The state has what's called an income tax. And, you know, to make it simple, if you if you were to earn, like, $100,000, do they tax it? Do you pay 1%, which would be $1,000, 2%, which would be 2000 what, 5%, which would be 5000 Want to take a guess? Um, 11%. High. Very high. Actually, what it is currently is 5%. Okay. So on $100,000 of income, you pay 5%. And four years ago, in 2010, it was only 3%. Yeah. And Governor Pat Quinn and the Democrats, the Republicans did not support this, sort of in like the dead, dead of night, whatever that expression is, with some lame ducks, people who were no longer going to be in the legislature had either voted out or resigned, got them to pass a tax increase from 3% to 5%, which is a lot of money, seriously. I mean, because you have all these other taxes, but just this alone, you went from paying $3,000 a year to 5000 a year if yeah. you got 100000 in income. And they said it would be mostly temporary, and in four years, the tax rate would fall back unless something was done automatically from 5% to 3.75. I know people are glazing over because I'm using decimals here. But, so that means January 1 of 2015, about three months after you come back, just as a land milestone, about three months after you return to Chicago, it was your returning to Chicago, everybody, those guys who were asking, where's Jen? She'll be back in September, especially if you're a Christian Mingle guy, because, you know, they might want to take you out, right? They might, yeah. You are definitely available to an attractive Christian Mingle kind of guy, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know that I want to say Christian Mingle. I'm, I'm available for a strong Christian man, yes. Strong Christian man. Yes. You know? So, and then three months later, the tax rate just is like you happen to be born during the Jimmy Carter Belize year and so forth. It is just marking the pool. Because it is political. We're doing politics and religion and dating all in one. So, Yeah. And isn't it all mixed up anyway? It is. So, in January, the tax rate was supposed to go back to 375 and Governor Packman said, no, he changed his mind. It shouldn't be temporary. We need that to stay at 5%. Okay. And the thing of it is, I'm saying, this goes back to my show with State Representative Ron Sandek. Most people just bring him on talk about this sort of sexy issue, so to speak, same-sex marriage, no pun intended. Um, and here we spent a lot of time when I had him on talking about just what I've just done now in a minute or two. What was the tax rate? Did it go up? And more importantly, what will happen Will it come back down to 375? Will it, that's what's scheduled to happen now if nothing else happens. And I'll just tell people, if you watch Public Affairs on a week from this Monday, on that will be Monday the 23rd, cable channel 21 throughout the city of Chicago, you will find out from State Representative Ron Sandek, you know, what's going to happen to the tax rate and what's going to happen to your are you going to be paying five thousand a year if you're making a hundred thousand? Are you going to be paying only only three thousand seven hundred fifty dollars? That's like a twelve hundred fifty dollar difference. And of course, as you would point out, Jen, that's just a small part of the total taxes, because as you say, federal, county, property tax all together, we're not talking five thousand out of a hundred thousand. We're talking people paying forty thousand out of a hundred. Yeah. 000. I mean, it, there's something in the Bible about how much you give to Caesar and how much you give, render that to God. You know that phrase, something about Give that. to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what yeah. is God's. And give to Pat Quinn everything else. Now, yeah. Wow. yeah. So, no. wrapping this all together, I think everybody can see this. The name of your blog on chicagonow.com is chicagonow.com slash Jen Chicago takes... The Windy City. That's right. <laughs> ChicagoNow.com 
downtown Chicago takes the Windy City. And that's where they go to see a variety of promotional things that you've distilled, you've synthesized, and you said, here's what you really want to know. Like the Four Seasons Hotel might have a promotional thing, and it might tie it in with Breast Cancer Month, and it's a serious thing. And you may want to get more fit, and so there might be something about promotional things for people to get into fitness programs. And what else am I missing that might show up on that blog? Um, definitely uh, videos about places that I've been or, um, you know, big events. Like I said, I did, you know, I, I do some red carpet interviewing. So, um, is that on your blog or is that on Jen Chicago? Too? I put some on Jen Chicago. I, I put some on Chicago now for sure. And the last they, time I went. I would say red carpet interviewing. A lot of people, like my viewers, wouldn't know, and my readers, because they're into politics, they may not know. I mean, I, they shouldn't. But what do you mean by red carpet interviewing? Just, you know, bigger events in Chicago, um, Chicago Film Critics Awards, um, you know, grand opening of Rolls Royce, uh, just bigger events that have a bigger production. It, they you have, go out to the red carpet where these celebrity types, business or government or drama or entertainment, walk up this red carpet. They literally roll out a red carpet so they don't have to step on the street, right? I mean, heaven forbid. Heaven forbid. And so these celebrity types come there, and Jen, you just show up there, and you just like search, they put a mic in their face, because you did this on 24-7 Chicago. I mean, in a polite way, not like me. I was just like, okay, Governor Quinn, what do you got to say about that? No, but so seriously, you go there, and you video it, and you get audio, and you, you know, get video, and you pull it out, and it appears on your site. And people don't have to go to these red carpet events. They can just go <laughs> to your blog and see it, right? There you go, for a lot less money. <laughs> and and you're somebody who brings, you're not like a kid right out of Medill School of Journalism. And they're okay. I don't mean to slap the millennials, the 22-year-old kids. But you're somebody with 15 years of experience, basically, in corporate public relations, seriously, right? Yep. And you've been working for the smallest and the biggest to IBM and doing that. And you said, I'm going to do something more creative. And you went into TV. And now you said, I'm going to do something even more creative than that. And that's what you're doing. It is. And, and now you're not sure what you're doing when you come back to Chicago in September of 2014, right? Um, I, I, I definitely want to um, travel more and focus more on the cultures, the neighborhood cultures. You know, maybe a little less sexy, as you might call it, but that's where I, I feel that my passion is. I'm really interested in learning. And, and they can see some of that on your other website, jenchicago.com, right? For sure. And they'll be able to see more of it. Are you still keeping current on these sites? Are you still, even though you're down and you're doing, in a sense, God's work? I mean, and I'm being very serious. You're taking care of your grandmother, and that's what families should do. But while you're doing that, you're not completely out of the professional world. You're going around taking video, and you're putting some of that up on jenchicago.com. I am. From tech, right? Yeah, I, I I'm made some videos about my vacation in uh, Mexico, and then I went to Chicago, made some videos there. So, yeah, they're in the hopper, as we say. So they need to be, some videos need to be edited and posted. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I really have a passion for travel, so... And you might even try writing a little bit, I think, on either of these sites about, you know, ChristianMingles.com and your experience. <laughs> okay. I think it relates to this stuff, okay? Yeah. It all comes together. It's all life. It, it really yeah. is, yes. Right, seriously. And I'm not, I mean, you know, sounds, because people laugh at when you say that stuff, but it is all life. I mean, if you have a serious conversation whether it's about religion, whether it's about politics, whether it's about the war in Iraq, whether it's about the income tax rate. I mean, you know this stuff. No, you knew this. I mean, it's not like, oh, I only do this and I don't do that. I don't know how you knew it, but you knew that 40% of people's taxes goes to government, okay? <laughs> no, and I, you know, I think you should be proud of that. Okay. <laughs> like St. Edward's College there, I don't know, you know, but... Okay, so you got those two sites, and then remember, we've got one more website, right? That's right. What's that? JenKenodal.com. And that's K-N-O-E-D-E-L, right? That's right. 
just get something up there, but it's blocking my screen, so let me just remove that. Hold on. Cinema Verite there. And what goes up on that website? Um, the really, the, the more personal stuff, really, really, I'm trying to kind of documenting this journey. I mean, even, even up to the part where we're taking care of my grandmother, I mean, it's, it's really not what I wanted to do to be frank. Um, but I had been, um, really praying for God's guidance and then this happened. It was like, Oh, when I said, tell me what to do, I meant, tell me what to do fun. Tell me what to do fancy. Tell me what to do to stroke my ego. Not tell me what to do. Go take care of my grandma in a town with like only college kids. So, what, you know, like what if some guy is out there watching us, you know, the Lord works in I, mysterious ways. It could be your Prince Charming. It I mean, could it could be. be this like good looking <laughs> guy with great. like a six pack, right? Six that pack, would- maybe. You know, six pack, not a two pack, not a four pack, but a six pack. I don't know, because now maybe he's spending too much time in the gym. He sounds a little full of himself. We'll just have to see. We take it on a case by case basis. You might prefer a six, a two pack. May, yeah, maybe that's better. But seriously, so this guy sees that and he's got the kind of religious values that you have. You share them. He's attractive to you. He's now really heard you kind of spill your guts, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're on, you're, you're good at these interviews. I'm all, oh, um, well. Which knows you. And there could be a guy or a lady in Chicago who's watching this and saying, you know, when Jen comes back, I think I ought to give her a call because she knows how to put this stuff together. She knows how to take this technically. She knows how to make interviews interesting. She wants to go around Chicago doing this. Why don't we make it a little easier? We'll just give her a camera person. She'll go around. They'll do that. We'll upload it. We'll create a channel. I mean, you no longer have to go broadcast or even cable, right? No. It's online, right? Yeah. And, you know, and we'll just get people to subscribe to it. And we get, like, I don't know, 100,000 100, subscribers. They pay, I don't know, so 100,000, they pay $10 each. What is that? That's a cool million dollars, I think, right? I like it. You walk away with 400K. I walk <laughs> away with 400K because it's Jen and The Jeff. city in, of Chicago walks away with... <laughs> 100K. We give Ron his cut. You know? Yeah. And, and then we give NBC somebody or whoever wants to do this. But seriously, you know, that kind of thing could happen or somebody on Facebook could see this and say, well, why don't we create a Facebook channel or another YouTube channel or something somehow different, something that we're going to peddle content for, you know, the pigs who have Androids or iPhones, and, you know, stuff happens, right? It does. Stranger things have happened. I mean, it was like Bill Gates, 35 years ago, maybe, 40, sitting in, dropped out of Harvard, sitting in his garage, who came up with PC computer. Is Steve Jobs, who had kind of trouble with Apple, and left Apple, I think, for a while, and then came back and led this tremendous resurgence on smartphones. I mean, folks, we said we would tie this all together. What does this say to you, Jen? Why don't you tie it together? I'm going to do what I... I'm just going to ask my guest, and you are my guest. Tie this together in a 30 seconds or so. Um, we only have a short time on this earth, and there's so many wonderful things to be interested in, and you owe it to yourself to investigate... Um, the things that you're interested in and not take other people's word for it and um, watch less TV and do more reading and have deep, interesting conversations with people because you just might learn something. Yeah. And I mean, I'd say we've been doing this now for about 90 minutes. So this is basically going to be like a documentary or what you might call a, you know, a full length program for people who really want to get into it. And and I think you've tied it up pretty well. I don't really have, I don't think I have much to add. I think you <laughs> okay. get this done. We'll put this out there. It's going to, I I think you're really quite good at this, seriously. Thank you so and much. I think people watching that will say that, okay? And I don't think you're really good sport because I don't think there are a lot of people with your background and your skill and your views who would be willing to just be as candid as you've been. I appreciate it. Thank you. And I think it's, I think it's good TV. Thanks. And I think it's going to be good on the blog for reading. I think the Tribune should be really happy with this. 
and uh, it's a bit long. <laughs> it is a bit long. Well, we, we we can stay on a bit longer, but if you want to sign us out, I'll, I'll hit the stop record button. Oh, yeah, because I'm just thinking, yeah, I probably think we've got it for, we've got it for um, pretty much our readers, your readers, my readers, um, our viewers, and um, I mean, people say this all the time, look, Brock did this show six times, I think he would tell you, if you, I don't know, and I know you've had some parents had some differences with him, and you have, but basically he's a good guy. I'm sure he, he seems like, a, you know, he's trying to do good stuff. And I'm just saying, he went on to become president, and he would say, Jeff, a half an hour with you, it's kind of intellectually and emotionally exhausting. <laughs> I can, I can see where he's coming from. He sure. 90 minutes. I mean, yeah. folks, you, I mean, really, you, I wish I could, I wish I could give you a reward commensurate with your skill and effort here. But all I can say is, um, I mean, you're up there with Barack. I mean, you may not always agree with him, but he's a pretty accomplished guy. And, you know, Rahm Emanuel, our mayor, was on this show twice, and you're up there wow, with Wow, fancy. And, you know, I mean, I didn't do a show, but I did do, you know, five minutes with Bill O'Reilly. You may have heard of the O'Reilly. I love Killing Jesus, yeah. Yeah, and so Bill interviewed me. It was a little bit different. Oh, wow, yeah. He doesn't mince, mince words. So, I mean, and, you know... Um, I mean, basically, if anybody has done anything of note in Chicago politics or Illinois politics in the last 16 years, they've been on public affairs. That's so, fantastic. And, well, I'm honored. Thank you. And, I appreciate it. you are it. now with them. Really. Thank you. Now, this, I, I, know, I know that you took a lot of time out of it, and you, you still have to do the time of posting and uploading and tagging and describing and all that. We go through a lot of work for all this stuff, guys, so I, I do appreciate it, so thank you. I think pretty much this is, I know, I know when this stuff gets posted on Monday and they have all these choices on chicagodow.com among all the bloggers, you know, this is in all modesty. <laughs> my guest, I expect this to be one of the primo posts. So. All right. Well, I'll, I'll do my part and tweet it out. All right. Great. Okay. okay. So we're going to, you're going to close it out and then we're going to just talk and chat for a few sure. minutes. Sure. Yeah, right. you want to say goodbye? I I mean I don't I just usually close and we just cut out I mean like in mid sentence but um, oh okay all right just, bye everybody ought to just come back and always watch public affairs if you don't know when it's on go to go to chicagonow dot com slash public affairs and you'll find our programs whether you're in the one of the thirty four Chicago metro suburbs. Uh, where we are on Comcast, or whether you're in the city of Chicago, where we are on Comcast, or RCN, or where whether you're in Aurora, where some really interesting stuff has come out of Aurora, and I mean it seriously. I'm talking, or in Rockford, we're on Rockford. We're also often on the Illinois Channel, which is the poor man's C-SPAN, which is around the state of Illinois. And uh, I just, um, anybody who's endured the last 90 minutes... And I think for me, because I've kind of not always asked as crisp a question as I could have. And, you know, Jen has, like, basically taken these not-so-clear questions and sort of turned them into nice, focused, understandable answers. If anybody's been even watching to see that, well, I don't have to tell you how good this show's been. Thank you right. so much. All right. Okay. Bye, everyone. <laughs>